In today's video, I wanna focus on my top 10 tips for being a better concert photographer. Hi guys, my name is Steve Gerard. I'm a photographer based here in Montreal, Canada, and I shoot bands, I shoot portraits, and some pretty cool weddings. And today I wanna to concentrate on the band part of that sentence, which is concert photography and my top 10 tips for being a better concert photographer. So let's get into it. Now, as you may know, concert photography can be one of the most challenging forms of photography out there. You're gonna be shooting in very tricky lighting conditions. There's gonna be people all around you. There's gonna be loud music, people moving everywhere. And it's just really difficult because you can't tell the lighting guy what how you want the lighting. You can't tell the people on stage how you want them to stand or where you want them to stand. And you just have to be ready for everything that's gonna happen. And sometimes you only get the first three songs to do that. So super challenging, but let's get into it in reverse order with tip number 10. And that is start small. You might wanna photograph your favorite band when you first get started, but if that's a big band, the amount of people that are gonna to wanna to shoot that concert is gonna be bigger. The amount of photo passes available is gonna be more limited. So definitely start with a smaller band and get experience in shooting concerts and working in that kind of environment. The thing about smaller bands is they really need good pictures to help promote themselves and get to that next level. So if you're offering to come down and do some pictures for them, whether it's band portraits or at a concert that they're doing, you will find that a lot of bands will put you on the guest list and let you shoot the show completely for free in return for them being able to use a few of the pictures afterwards. And that's good for you because your pictures are starting to get out there into the world. The other thing about small bands is they could go on to become big bands and you could have got in there first. You might have pictures at the beginning of their career, which are harder to get hold of when they get bigger. Maybe the next thing they're gonna do is support a slightly bigger band and then you can go and shoot that show for them, but also shoot the bigger band that plays after them. Or maybe eventually they get to be a big band themselves and they remember you from day one when you helped them out and they bring you along or they ask you to do new press shots and that can help get you access to all kinds of bands. One big tip I can give you is if you hear about a band or a new artist that's coming out and maybe they've got their first single coming out and there's a bit of a buzz around them, you might wanna try and find out if they're playing near to you because they'll be playing a smaller show and you can hopefully get in there really at the beginning of their career. And if they do take off like they might, you were there and you already have those pictures in your portfolio at the, from the beginning of their career. There was an artist that came out in 2011 and she just released her first single and there was definitely that kind of buzz that they were gonna be something special. And they were playing in Birmingham, which is where I lived at the time, and they were only playing to about 700 people. So I managed to get a pass because there wasn't that much demand for passes to shoot the show. And I got some pictures of that artist at the very beginning of their career. They only had seven songs, so the gig was really short. But I got the pictures and that artist got bigger and bigger very quickly. And you might know her, her name is Lana Del Rey. Tip number nine is get the right gear. Now that might seem obvious, but having good gear that deals with low light situations is definitely gonna help you out. But more importantly, having gear where you know the best settings to shoot the concert and to get that light into the lens, that's super important too. So I pretty much always use prime lenses, which means that they have that wide aperture that you can go down to 1.4, 1.2 sometimes. So the light is coming in and it means I don't have to bump up my ISO to get the light into the lens in tricky lighting situations, especially at dark concerts. I recommend full frame cameras or mirrorless cameras, especially if you can get a newer body because they do tend to work better at higher ISOs and the picture quality will still be good even if you're shooting up to 3200 or 6400 ISO. You also wanna be choosing the right kind of lens depending on where you're gonna be shooting. If you're shooting in a small venue, you could be very close to the band, so you might want a wide angle lens, but if you're shooting at a festival or an arena or something like that, you're gonna need a longer lens, probably something like a 70 to 200 or even more depending on the size of the venue. For this palm reader show, I knew that I was gonna be up close and personal with the band and I still wanted to get as much of the stage and the different musicians in as I could. So I took my 24 mil lens. 
But for Beyonce, I had to shoot from the sound desk at a festival and I was way back. So I had my 600 mil lens on a monopod. Not the ideal situation for shooting a gig, but it is what it is. And Beyonce is Beyonce and she can tell me to do whatever she wants. Tip number eight, check YouTube. And by that, I mean, before you go to a gig, maybe see if you can find footage from previous gigs, hopefully recent gigs of that band on that tour playing in the environment that you're going to be shooting in. That way you can see how the stage is set up, where the different members of the band are going to be stood, what the lighting is like, and just get a better idea of the situation that you're going to be in when you shoot. Now you might only have three songs to shoot, so maybe go on Setlist FM and see what those three songs have been in previous shows on that tour. Then you know roughly how long you're going to have to shoot. And you can find videos of those songs on YouTube and see exactly what was going on in that moment and be prepared for that scenario. Tip number seven, be respectful. And that means be respectful of the artists, be respectful of the fans, and be respectful of other photographers. Don't be that photographer that builds a barrier between the artists and the fans, because that is what the concert's all about. The fans have paid their money, they don't really want that photographer to be blocking their view, and the artist wants to make that connection. So move around, don't stay in any one position any longer than you really have to and always be respectful of the artist and the fan relationship. But then also be respectful of other photographers. They're there to do a job as well as you are and they want to get as much variety from that situation as they can. So don't be that photographer that hogs the best spot. Consider them, keep moving around and you'll make some friends along the way. Tip number six, shoot the support bands. Now, there's multiple reasons for this. First of all, it's good practice for when you're in a situation and you don't know what the lighting's gonna be, you don't know how the stage is gonna be set up, but you can practice on the support bands before the main band comes on. By then you should have your, your settings dialed in and be ready for when they come on, which it might be the first thing that happens when they come on stage, which is the killer photo. Especially with a bigger band, if the opening band has been chosen for that tour, they're probably at a certain level already and will continue to get bigger and bigger and could be headlining that venue on their next tour. So you can get in there really, get pictures of them on their way up, and then maybe you'll be able to get passes for them when they're headlining. Now, just because the lighting was good or bad for the support bands doesn't mean it's going to be exactly the same for the headliner. One time I was shooting Arctic Monkeys, they had two support bands, the lighting was pretty good, so I was in my zone and I thought everything was going to be fairly easy. Arctic Monkeys come on, all the light disappears, everything's super dark, and I had to change all my settings to cope with that situation. But that's concert photography. One of my friends was shooting in Belfast, and he was shooting Girls Aloud, and he decided that he was going to go down for the opening act, just so that he could get in the zone, get his camera settings ready for when Girls Aloud came on. At the time, the support act wasn't that well known, but he got pictures of them early in their career because that artist was Lady Gaga. Hey guys, um, just a little aside. If you're getting any useful information out of this video and you want to hit that like button below, that's going to help me out a lot. So I would appreciate it. Thanks. Oh yeah, and there's going to be more stuff coming, so you might want to subscribe. Maybe. Maybe not. Tip number five is focus on the eyes. Now, this is more for beginners who tend to go in and because they're in a low light situation and because they're shooting up from beneath the stage, sometimes the focus point can be anywhere from on the guitar to on the chest or anywhere else, but not on the face or the eyes. And that is the bit that needs to be in focus most of the time, not always. Sometimes you might wanna shoot up with the focus on the guitar. I've got a friend of mine in Montreal who shoots a lot of pictures of the shoes, whatever. But for the most part, if the eyes are in focus or at least the face is in focus, then the picture should be good. Tip four is shoot raw. Now, you might start off at the beginning shooting JPEG just because it's easier and the files are smaller, but in constant situations, when you come to the editing, you might need to manipulate that picture a bit more than you would a regular picture. So having as much detail in that photo file as possible is definitely going to help you out. And shooting in RAW is a big part of that. Number three, move around. Don't stay in one place all the time. Just because you've got the best spot and you're right next to the singer 
don't just stay there and don't let other photographers get into that spot but also the main thing that you should be doing is trying to get as much variety from the time that you're in the pit as possible so move around change lenses if you've got two bodies you can have two lenses one on each and just get as much variety and try to tell the story of that show so imagine the people looking at the pictures weren't at the show but they want to get a feel of what it was like to be there that's kind of your job so the storytelling part will be really important you want to get close-up pictures of the artist you want to get wide pictures of the entire band you want to try and incorporate pictures of the fans and maybe if you are able to you can get into the crowd and shoot from that point of view get up onto the balcony and shoot down on the scene mix it up as much as you can and then you will end up with a set of images that give a bigger picture of how it felt to be there with smaller shows and even with some bigger shows they may allow you to shoot the entire set but quite often you only get the first three or sometimes even the first one song so make the most of the time you've got and try and get as much variety in the images in that space of time as you possibly can top tip number two wear earplugs trust me on this one it's super important obviously you want to look after your hearing you're going to be down the front quite a lot of the time you're going to be right next to the speaker sometimes the speaker is right next to your ear and obviously it's going to be very loud especially if you're photographing like metal bands or anything like that just look after your hearing get earplugs whether it's the cheap foam ones or you want to get something more expensive where they're custom made and naturally molded to the inside of your ear and they keep out the harmful frequencies whether it's cheap or expensive at least get something and then when you're back in the crowds you maybe you can take them out to enjoy the gig more if you want but while you're near the speakers look after your ears and finally tip number one share your photos now it might seem obvious but sometimes people only share them with certain people maybe they only sh share them with their friends but you want to share them with the bands you want to share them with the band's management and press people you want to get maybe onto the event page on facebook or onto the band's page on facebook and put your pictures there the best of the best that you took at that show get them on instagram tag the band tag their record label anybody that's connected with the band just get them out there and make sure as many people see them as possible and obviously you want to share your pictures with as many people as you can but you never know where that might lead somebody might see your pictures and want you to shoot their band somebody might want to buy a print of the show because they were there or maybe it's just their favorite band and you can make some money from that or the management or their press people might want you to shoot another one of their bands because they're coming to town not long after and if i can just give you one extra bonus tip it is have fun this is all about having fun and enjoying the show and enjoying the concert with your camera and maybe you're not going to get paid that much a lot of concert photographers don't get paid much if at all so don't do it for the money you need to be in there for the right reasons and that is because you love music because you love photography and you can do two things that you love at the same time and then enjoy the rest of the show hopefully so that's what it's all about have fun and we'll see you in the next one all right bye